In this video we'll discuss the panels section of the Memorial Designer Docker. So if I scroll up to the top here, the very top section is standard panels. Right now we've got two panels on here, so we've got one behind Kathy and one behind Ethan, and they're just single line panels. But if we wanted to switch those to a different style panel, we can easily do that with the standard panels. First, usually what I like to do though, since we've already got granite fills here, would be to go back to the grayscale. So I should have done that before I scrolled up, but we'll just hit fill grayscale here. That will get us back to those grayscale values. Then I'll come back up to panels. So in order to change your panels, you have to have them selected. Um, and so I can easily select these two panels just by clicking here in the white space dragging a marquee around both of those and then let, letting go. That's going to select both of those panels as well as their text but it won't select the design in the middle because my marquee was not tall enough uh, either high enough nor low enough in order to select um, that inside design there. So I've got both of those panels selected and all I have to do is click over here to a different style so if I wanted to do double line for instance I could just hit apply and it would rebuild those panels as double lines instead of single. Because it's already got text inside of these panels it will not re-space them. It, it just keeps the same spacing. Um, however, if we wanted to re-space them we could do that as well. We just need to delete the panel and start fresh with just the text. There's the different styles here. A frost line is just a single frost line. The single line is a frost line with a hard line on, on the outside and this setting determines how thick that hard line is. So your single line with frost is similar to this but adds on an extra frost line which is this number here. And then as we saw the double line already just has two different hard lines with a bar line in between those. So these settings are all changeable and you can edit those depending on which one you have selected you can change those. You can also save the settings for whatever you use most often. Just hit the disk here and it would save those settings. You can scallop the corners which is nice and the scallop then is this number here so if I wanted to scallop those corners it would do so. The one thing with scalloped corners is that if you do not have recreate panel checked um, you can run into a problem with scalloping the scallops which is not what you want to happen. Um, on a double line panel it kind of messes things up a lot more than that so if I went to a frost line I'll just go ahead and hit apply you'll see how it did a frost line but it scalloped the scallops and I'll just hit it again and it just keeps doing that that's not what we want to happen. So, in order to overcome that, we have the recreate panel option, which basically finds the bounding box size, the overall size of your piece, and rebuilds a rectangle to start from, and then it will rescallop that rectangle. So, on occasion you need to have recreate check uh, recreate panel checked, and then occasionally you want it unchecked, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit as well. Um, so it's nice that you can do multiple panels all at the same time. This Howard Stone, or sorry, the Howard last name is actually Frosted Outline as we did before. But if I come in, I'll just click on the, the outline part and delete that. And then I'll take this text and make it black again. So what I could do is I could build a panel around this text. So I just select the text and choose the style that I want and hit apply and it will build a panel around that text. The spacing between top and bottom of the letter to the panel and the bottom of the letter to the bottom of the panel is this number here, text spacing. So if I wanted that to be a little bit tighter I could change that to half of an inch instead. But I would have to, since it's already got text and it's already built that panel, um, I would need to delete that, start back with the text and hit apply so that it can rebuild it based on that text. Otherwise, it's set to ignore the text. 
The next thing is that if we have multiple lines of text, it can space between those lines and build the panel around it. So I'll just go ahead and delete this panel, and we'll see how it compares to the one over on the right. So I will hold, click on one, and holding down shift, click on the next two so that I have all three of those selected, and then just hit apply. And you'll see that it rebuilt that. The spacing was actually the same. So let's redo that with a little bit higher number. And that way we can reapply that. So you'll see that that spaced the text further apart because it was 0.75 now instead of the 0.5 that we had before. Once again, if I want to get it back down to where it was, I would need to delete that, restart with the text, type in my 0.5 and hit apply. When you've got two names side by side, it's best to find whichever name or date is the longest and start with that one for your panel because um, you want your panels to be a consistent size. Otherwise, if I built a panel around one name and then let's say if we had this changed to October instead of July, and 1911, so that's now quite a bit shorter. If we were to rebuild that panel, this panel here on the right now is smaller than the one on the left, so it's 10 and 3 quarters basically, and this is 12. So we have two different size panels, and that's not going to look good at all. So what you want to do is find whichever one is the longest, you can take that one and then just mirror that over to the other side. If I click in the white space, oops, I grabbed my bitmap, I'm going to click a little bit lower. So click and drag. I know that there's stuff behind there, so I'll just drag it to about there. Not dragging too far because I don't want to select the panel. I'll just drag to about right there. That gives me the text selected. I can go to Object, Order, to Front of Layer, or I prefer to use the Shift Page Up keyboard shortcut. Okay, so now that we've got panels around all of that, we can actually select all of it at once and change those panels all together. Um, you just have to make sure you select them all. So I would usually marquee select this one and then do what we did before where we marquee select these, but I'm holding down shift while I marquee select and that's going to add these to the selection. So holding down shift adds to my selection. Now I've got all three panels selected and I can change to a double line. I do not want scalloped corners this time. And I do want to recreate my panels, so I just hit apply. There we go. With the double line panels this way, we're running into a little bit of a problem with spacing here, not having enough space. So I'm going to show another thing that we could do here. If I click and delete so each of these has two pieces that I need to delete, the frosted piece and then the, the black outline. So I just deleted all of those. And then what I could do is I could take my stone shape itself, come over here to the left and grab the contour tool, and then I could do a contour. I typically like to just click on the outline or the edge here, click and drag inwards, and that will interactively let me drag however big of a um, outline I wanted to give it. So let's say it looks pretty good right about there. So I'm just going to pull that in. And that's almost two inches. So I'm just going to type in two and hit enter so that it gives me a, a two inch contour there. Now a contour remains connected to whatever we contoured from until we go up to object and say break contour group apart. Once we do that, it then creates a separate object all by itself that we can mess with. So this one, I'm going to, uh, first I'll, I'll send it to the back of the page, so shift page down, uh, sorry, the back of the layer, not the back of the page. And I'll do the same thing with the die, shift page down, and then I have to do the same thing with the rock pitching and my flowers, just to get them all the way to the back. Now I've got this piece that I can turn into a panel. 
So if I just hit re uh, apply right now with recreate panel selected, it's actually going to build a square, which is not what I want. I want it to follow that SERP. So I'll undo that. This time I'll uncheck recreate panels and say apply. That way it will keep that curve of the top. And we can pull in these pieces if we want to, a little bit lower. Bring this one down. And if we wanted to, we could maybe pull this text even up. I probably want to do all of the text at the same time, so I'm just going to click Shift, Marquee Select, so that way it selected both of those. And then I'll drag. While I drag, I hold Control on the keyboard, and that constrains to a straight line so that it stays uh, in a straight line while it's moving up. This text was white before, so I'll just select it, change it back to black. And then we've got this design here that we could either leave where it is, or possibly we could you know, move it down or up if we wanted it to to stay within that panel. I don't think it looks too bad dropping down, so we'll just go ahead and leave it there. But that's a different way of doing panels is off of off of the shape. You can actually build a panel off of any shape, really. If I were to take a circle or an ellipse, I could simply draw an ellipse like this and choose my panel style and hit apply and it would apply a panel to that. Um, we could also just scribble in a panel if we wanted to do a crazy panel all the way around our text here. I will go ahead and hide the panel that we had to begin with just so that we can see what this is going to look like and I'll hide this one as well. But if we took this interesting looking design that we had just created and make sure that we do not recreate the panel uh, because we don't want it to just turn into a square we can hit apply and it would create a panel for us because I drew that over the top of that text in the stacking order it's actually in front of it so I just grab my text again and shift page up to get it to the front so you can build all sorts of creative panels or all sorts of things there uh, using the standard panels section of the Memorial Designer Docker over here. So I'll just go ahead and delete these since I, don't, I didn't really want those. I just wanted to show you how that worked. And then to find the ones that I hid, I'll have to go to the Object Manager so that I can find those because obviously they're hidden. Here they are here. Just right click and say Show Object. So now that we've got this panel created, uh, we could go ahead and go back to our granite fills and refill it and this will show a bit of a different look compared to what we had before. Now if I were to change this text, let's say I got rid of Ethan's name here and I'll just take Kathy and mirror her over to the other side. So Kathy's text, I could type in Daniel R, and hit enter, type in a date, do the same thing here, so this is all the same size just because I hit enter, but I could go and switch this text. I prefer to hold control on the keyboard and hit the 2 on my numeric keypad and that drops it down in size by a quarter of an inch. If I hit 8 while holding control it will actually go up by a quarter of an inch 2 goes down by a quarter of an inch. If you look at your numeric keypad there's arrows on the 8 and the 2 up and down arrows. Uh, so that's what that's doing is it's using a keyboard increment to uh, resize our text. So I got that back down to 1 inch now this spacing is obviously different from this spacing because we had uh, we had already spaced this over here and this is just spaced using the enter button so it's not an actual inches spacing there. 
So if we wanted to respace this, I could recreate a panel again and either delete that panel or I could do the spacing only section over here. This middle section is for spacing only. I could just apply half inch uh, vertical distribution here and just hit apply. And that will go and change that to half inch. It's not building a panel. All this is doing is spacing. Usually we're spacing up and down or vertically. Horizontal distribution, you can do that as well. Um, but you'll see what happens if we do that. It spaces it out. Not really how we want it to here. But that's what horizontal does. Is it will space it the other way along the horizon. So before we had this as actually three lines of text that were all combined together but by doing the spacing and applying that spacing it breaks it into individual lines of text. Panels does the same thing. If I were to build a panel around three lines of text that were combined it has to break those apart in order to, uh, to space around them. One of the nice things with spacing is that um, it will space text based on the the baseline of the text as opposed to the f the physical bottom of the text. So even though there's commas that drop down here, uh, there's half inch spacing between the bottom of the D and the top of the F, and then from the bottom of the F to the top of the, the U. Uh, so it can account for that um, and not do spacing between the, the bottom of the comma and the U. And that's because this is text, so I have it set to to go off the baseline there. If this had been converted to curves it would actually space based off of the bottom of that comma instead of the baseline of the text.